talk about research and development. Uh, next, we have Ada Monzon, Chief Meteorologist at w, uh, IPR down in Puerto Rico, and looking forward to hearing your remarks. Good afternoon, colleagues and friends at the AMS. In summary, Maria is the most devastating tropical cyclone that has affected Puerto Rico in almost 100 years. And its scar is still present everywhere. Although it hit the island on Wednesday, September 20th, 2017, every day and every night, Maria is in our, in our conversation, in our news, in our landscape, in our way of life. The eye of the hurricane, as you can see in these satellite images, crossed the island, 100 by 35 mile island in the Eastern Caribbean, in a terrifying eight hour journey as a catastrophic hurricane. While it was traveling from Vieques to northwest of Aguadilla, with the tropical storm and hurricane winds combined, prevailing for 25 to 30 hours. Last time we had such an intense storm was in 1928. It was Hurricane San Felipe, which was also known here in the United States as the 1928 Lake Okeechobee Hurricane. These images show specifically the track of the storm as it was crossing from southeast to northwest. And this was San Felipe in 1928, and as you can see, very similar track to what Maria had in 2017. Even the same kind of picture where you have those two by four crossing the palm trees that we had is a signature picture of San Felipe. We had it as well with Maria. At sea level, Hurricane Maria was a category five, 160 mile an hour wind and pressure of 917 millibars as the eye wall and portion of the eye was passing over Vieques between four and 5 a.m. of September 20th. Then it lost about five miles an hour and became a category four, 4.9, around 5 to 6 a.m. This is a very sensitive issue in Puerto Rico. So that's why I'm leaning more toward 4.9. While he was entering the main island through the southeast corner, Vieques, if it's considered a landfall, then it would be the lowest pressure in our historical records. If this is not the case, then it would be the second. As it was exiting through the northwest portion, it was a category three with 115 mile per hour. Unfortunately, we lost almost all the wind data. We lost the Doppler radar. We lost the data from the weather service, from the university, from the buoys, from the USGS. We only have four complete records of wind data. And this data that I'm gonna be showing you will um, came from a study that the National Science Foundation uh, has been doing in accordance to the University of Puerto Rico in Maya West. These are some of the uh, video coming from iCyclone and there's plenty of good YouTube video. You just write Hurricane Maria Puerto Rico, even in Spanish, Huracan Maria Puerto Rico, and you will find this incredible, incredible winds that were crossing uh, it, it was just amazing the way that nature behaves. This is storm surge, Janie, in Punta Santiago, Umacao. Um, the flooding was extreme. And the damages are to buildings, uh, the amount of rain that fell that you're going to see almost 38, 38 inches of rain, it was amazing. So this is, a, the, the circle is just the approximate eye location while it was coming in. And this is what we have in terms of wind. This is maximum wind gust. I would like to thank the engineering department of the University of Puerto Rico, Gian Villamil, Jose Garcia, and Ernesto Rodriguez, some of whom are here uh, from the Weather Service for this data. So um, Culebra, 
Sarah had uh, didn't get the eye through the, uh, you know, coming through, but it was in the eye wall, and it had a gust of 137 miles per hour. We had uh, Guayama, we had 125. Uh, in Gurabo, that those are the uh, complete records, 120 miles an hour. But the Abucoa, where the eye made landfall, we only have a partial record of 117 um, in San Juan. Uh, the weather service office is 109 in Rincon to the northwest 104 and this was part of the uh, group that I've been working with in the with the NSF Notre Dame and the University of Puerto Rico in Maya West these are some of the damages because of the wind uh, as you can tell um, the most direct damage was observed on structures that were not built according to code windows and and doors. I have to mention that um, you have to bear in mind that about 75% of Puerto Rico's land area consists of hills or mountains. So even though if this was a category four at landfall, at sea level, it was not felt as a category four up in the mountain, right? So every place in Puerto Rico had Hurricane force winds, but along the mountain range, we estimated that more than 160 mile an hour occurred. As a matter of fact, we got a report that is not confirmed, but Eddie Vasquez is one of our most reliable emergency managers in Puerto Rico, and he had a Davies weather station, and he had 161 miles an hour. So. Um, windows and doors that were not hurricane resistant, structures in elevated terrain. Uh, in Puerto Rico, it's very common to build a second story house in wood frame and metal ceilings. Uh, those were gone. Um, most of those second story homes disappeared at the landfall site. More than 200,000 households out of around 1,200,000 were totally or partially destroyed. And in some communities, 80 to 90% of the homes were severely damaged. All the power authority transmission towers, television, radio, and communication towers, which are located in the mountains, uh, were completely destroyed. Our television tower, located in the same area, and was 1,000 feet high, was torn to pieces, and the six inch tension cables that you see there that were used to hold the tower were severed and began to lash and rip the main building. Some of these lines were even buried underground. How did that happen? We don't know. The weather service Doppler radar, this is what's left. Their Doppler radar was located at 2,900 feet. This was the last image as it was coming through the southeast portion of the island. Um, this is me and the engineering department at the University of Puerto Rico looking for what was left of the radar. We found it about 500 feet okay. south, south of the um, tower site. Um, that uh, we found it 32 days after the the, the hurricane. So it's just incredible the way. Seems, it seems like the 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 dome and the plate. They they came out as a single entity and it was thrown like it was a ball against the trees and then it got shattered and scattered. It was just amazing just to see and you can tell from the vegetation what was. Well, then we did some forensic work afterward to determine where was the plate because we found the dome but we couldn't find the plate. So we went again to find the plate and it's, yeah, we found it. Uh, so it, this was the place where we had the dome and we just had to go downhill and then we found the pieces of the plate. So there was nothing left. That's the main message. And you know what the worst part is? That we don't know when we're gonna get a radar back. So these are some of the pictures showing before and after. This is the University of Puerto Rico. 
So this was like a ghost town, right? All the trees, almost all of them, I, I would say that 75% of them lost their foliage and about 50% of them were uprooted. The palm trees, especially in Umacao, were snapped, torn, and some of them even found a way to fly. And what most of our colleagues and I feel is that a huge tornado, maybe an EF3 or EF4, went through Puerto Rico. I have many pictures of cars, many. I just couldn't decide how many I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But this, this just happened everywhere. This is the University of Puerto Rico Atmospheric Chemistry Lab. This is where we study Saharan dust in Puerto Rico at El Yunque, at the rainforest, completely gone. The storm surge. Well, in our visits, we estimated that between six to nine feet happened in Punta Santiago. This was the hardest hit community due to wind and storm surge. Most people evacuated, and as a matter of fact, we do not have deaths directly associated to storm surge. And most people evacuated, but the ones that stayed, believe me, had the most terrifying story I have ever heard. So these are videos about how the storm surge was coming through. Can you imagine being through this experience? This is a church at the same area in Punta Santiago in Umacao. We had 29 inch. Then we went to these other places. It varied. It was not like 29 inches or 40 inches. It, it kept varying. I, I think the highest we had was 55 inches, but we were about three to four feet above sea level. So that was like the dead, the still mark. Uh, the still water mark. In terms of rainfall, we're highest in the in eastern central part of the island. The National Weather Service reports 38 inches in two days. Many um, records in some areas. We had major landslides. Mm -hmm. These are before and after pictures. This is a very, as a signature picture of, of this uh, bridge. It's called El Campamento Los Olvidados. Everyone forgets about them because no one can reach them. It's very difficult. The situation is very difficult. And this is the map showing the concentration of landslides caused by Hurricane Maria, especially Utuado had the largest. And look at this picture, at, at this video. It's like a huge cat came through the island and was scratching. Every, every single place you see at, you see there is, is a landslide. So it's very, very difficult to get even food or, I'm trying to get there, okay. To get food, to get um, emergency supplies to places because the roads were just impossible. Absolutely impossible. And I can tell you that in my 30 years as meteorologist in Puerto Rico, even going through Hugo and George and more than 10 other tropical storms, I'm sorry, for the first time in my life, I was afraid. Not because of the wind or the storm surge or the rain. I was afraid of the future of Puerto Rico. And why? Let me put this in perspective. Puerto Rico was not ready for a catastrophic event. We were at the lowest point of vulnerability in our history. The economy and infrastructure were and is still weak. With the hope that insurance proceeds and the federal funding will help to rebuild the island. Puerto Rico has declared bankruptcy under Chapter 3. The economic situation was deeply affected how people and government prepared. There was a complete breakdown in communication between state, municipal, and federal government, but worst of all, most people underestimated the strength of the hurricanes because Irma, two weeks before Maria, did not do that much. 
So this was all a recipe for disaster. And the severity of Hurricane Maria brought a collapse in Puerto Rico like we have never, ever experienced in our lifetime. I should emphasize that our forecast and message deliveries was excellent, unprecedented, and I want to thank the Hurricane Center and the Weather Service for that job. I dedicated my life, myself, all my communication resources to getting the message out. Every three hours I was doing Facebook Lives, Twitter Lives, had over 31 million views over social media. But even with all the communication and meteorological work, we could not avoid the immense consequences of this hurricane in our island. But the forecast, the media, and the government's mobilization saved lives. Still to this day, there are huge discrepancies on how many people died in Puerto Rico because of Maria. Per government information, there were 64 deaths. Our other entities have informed the possibility of more than 1,000 deaths. The government is revising these numbers. How do you restart Puerto Rico? Well, the response and recovering efforts have been very slow and complicated. More than three months after the hurricane, near 40% of the island, near 40% near 45% of the island is still without power. Many are suffering. Mother, more than 100,000 people have left the island in the last three months to Florida, New York, and Texas, just looking for opportunities and better quality of life. And all of these situations build up a stress that still is overwhelming sometimes. And during two major hurricanes, has been hard, but at the same time, it has served a vast lesson to all, our, to all our society. We need to find a way of living with natural disaster for tackling potential catastrophic events, and we need to work harder as meteorologists and scientists to educate our public through all means of communication, especially social media. As a forecaster and doing hurricane education, preparedness, and mitigation through my entire career is very frustrating to see what happened in Puerto Rico. But I am satisfied that all that we have done through the years, like Jamie said, ha it has moved the needle. It has helped in many ways, and people that listened and acted are so grateful. I think we need to keep doing what we're trained to do and keep saving lives. If everything else collapses around us, at least we know we have the strength and opportunity to keep going forward because time will take care of the rest. Thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, if you don't leave here with a new commitment for what we do and for a, new, a renewed appreciation for what we have in our hands and the knowledge that we have in our hands, there's something wrong with you. So keep these fellow citizens in mind. Keep them in mind. Because they're still struggling. Keep them in mind. Thank you. Um,